Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Regional Radio Sports Network. We're broadcasting live from the File Center here on the campus of Holy Cross College in South Bend, Indiana. Snowy Wednesday evening here as uh, we hope all those who are watching at home are staying warm, staying safe for those of you who have to go out on the road. But for now, we got a men's and women's doubleheader action here on the Regional Radio Sports Network for you. My name is Adam Demery. Alongside me is Matt Copsey as tonight. The Holy Cross Saints coming in with an overall record of 7-13 and 13 overall, 4-5 and five in the Chicagoland Collegiate Athletic Conference, fresh off an 89-85 victory against Robert Morris, going to take on Calumet College of St. Joseph. The Crimson Wave are in town. The women's side of things there have a 1-17 record. They're on a six-game losing streak, 0-8 in conference play, Matt, but we'll start with Holy Cross. An impressive win on Saturday, especially in response to a tough loss to a good Purdue Cal team last Thursday. It was very similar in a lot of ways, only this time the Saints come away on top. Well, the main thing was, Adam, they got to the free throw line. They got their 41 times, hit 30 of them, taking Schultz, had a great ball game for Holy Cross, and they were able to get everybody else involved. And uh, the one thing is they were able to finish. That was the one thing that they weren't able to do in the Purdue Cal you met. And in a matter of speaking, that's what's been their uh, downfall this season is fourth quarter uh, down downfalls on this past Saturday, they were able to finish the job. Free throw shooting has been a problem for the Saints all season long. Last Thursday, come into the game against Purdue Cal, they were shooting at a 60% rate. They're now at a 62.8% rate. But Matt, almost 3% raising uh, your average in two games. That's pretty good for the Saints. Well, when you go from only eight, nine attempts one game to 41 and you and you hit the majority of them, that's going to help boost that percentage up. And I think tonight is something that they need to uh, work on doing that again. They need to make a concerted effort of taking the ball to the basket. Adam, one thing when you look at this uh, Calumet St. Joe Club and you take a look at the record, it reminds me of kind of a similar thing what we've seen from Holy Cross in the past, whatever, what, you know, not a lot of success and, you know, teams take advantage. Holy Cross cannot take this team for, for, uh, for granted or they're going to come out and think they're going to, they might not, the outcome might not be what they want it to be. Well, Calumet St. Joseph took Holy Cross for granted in the last game of the regular season last year for the Saints. The Saints sapped a 24-game losing streak against the Crimson Wave. That was the last time these two teams have met. Holy Cross looking for similar success here today. They've had two quick starts. They want another one here tonight. I had a chance to sit down with Amy Nespajani, head coach of the Holy Cross Saints, get her thoughts on today's contest. Here's what she had to say. Holy Cross basketball here on a coldy Wednesday evening here on the Regional Radio Sports Network. Adam Demery alongside me, Matt Copsey, as uh, Amy Nespajani is going to join us here. Her Saints 7-13, and 4-5 and five in the Chicago Lane Collegiate Athletic Conference taking on the Crimson Wave out of Calumet College of St. Joseph. Uh, team 1-17, and 0-8 oh and in conference play. And coach, let's start with Saturday's game. It was a tough contest, very similar to the game on Thursday, only this time you guys come on, on out on top. Yeah, you know, I think... Uh as bad as they wanted Thursday and let it slip, I don't think they're going to let that happen again. You know, we uh, did a lot of things well. Um, obviously, we still need to work on taking care of the ball a little bit, but uh, overall, I think our post showed up to play and our guard showed up to play, so it was a good team win. When you when you take a look back on Saturday and you, you, know, you go through some of those timeouts, or whether they be the media timeouts or timeouts you or the other team takes, was that message ever brought up Thursday? You know, hey, this is what happened on Thursday. Let's not have ha let that happen again. Uh, this is where we need to improve. Were those conversations ever coming up on Saturday? Oh, yeah, I don't let them forget that. Um, you know, I think, you know, and, and I try to use it in a way of motivation. Um, I, you know, it's, it's not a matter of beating them up. It's a matter of making them believe because, you know, we're playing with so many top 25 teams. Um, and a possession here and a pos possession there gets us really right where we need to be. Um, so a game like Saturday is great momentum for us, um, can push us into today, through today, and ready to go um, for the remainder of our conference season. Well, you mentioned the post players show up to play. Uh, rebounds continue to be uh, in your guys' favor. You're shooting the ball extremely well as well those last two games, not only from the three-point line, not only from your two-point field goals, but I think a big difference right now, you're, the charity stripe, you're shooting 62% now from the charity stripe. You've improved almost 3% in the last two games. That's got to give you some confidence as a head coach. Absolutely. You know, that those are all things that, you know, I look at almost as controllables because you get – you know, a higher percentage by gaining some confidence, by taking good shots. Um, and the only way you get confidence is getting in the gym when nobody else is in there. Um, and I know we, you know, I gave them a couple of days off the other day just to recover from that 10-day stretch where we had five games. And they were in here shooting. They, they don't take 
Um, they don't take those days off completely, um, which is, you know, it's a great place um, for our team to be because some of them obviously need to rest a little bit more than others. But, uh, you know, across the board, our guards are shooting well. Our posts are producing all the way, you know, all the way across from, you know, the two that are have been starting for us to Carmen and Raven. You know, they're just, you know, they go out there and it's, you know, they're playing more confidently, which I think is the big difference. So, um, you know, we have the talent. It's just the talent delivering with the confidence that it needs to have. So we're getting to that point, and it's not too late because we have a lot of games left. Shelby Nelson's been in foul trouble the last couple of games. Uh, she's fouled out on both of them. Has that been a, a point of concern from you? Has that been a, a message to her uh, over the last couple of days in, in terms of how to improve that and take away some of those fouls? You know, I think Saturday I almost fouled out. Um, there were so many fouls called, <laughs> uh, so I don't think Saturday is necessarily a fair measure. But uh, over, you know, overall, you know, your post players, depending on the, how the game is being called, you know, it, it's always a very vulnerable um, place for you know for players to be in because there's so much contact down there, and if it's contact that's being called compared to you know other games where they're letting you play um you know it, it every game's different every official calls the game a little bit different so uh, it doesn't really concern me because you know just because the type of player Shelby is uh obviously you know as the year continues on uh you know we didn't have that problem really early on so I think it's just a matter of how the officials those six officials three in one game three in the other were officiating the game well, let's turn our heads now to your opponent uh, in the Crimson Wave, a season that uh, maybe they're not uh, really that proud of right now from a record standpoint in terms of being 1-17. Uh, they're riding right now a six-game losing streak. When you take a look at Steve Helm and his first season, uh, this is a new program, new new look a little bit uh, for these girls for uh, the Crimson Wave. What do you see and what do you expect to see out of Calumet St. Joe? You know, you got to give him a little bit of credit for, you know, getting through. He hasn't really been put in a position to succeed this year with the timing of which he started and such. Uh, you know, that's a dangerous program overall. Uh, you know, we in years past have, have really had str- have struggled with Cal St. Joe due to their athleticism, the type of players that they typically get. Um, so, you know, any team can be any team on a given night. And I told my girls they need to go out there and they need to play like they're playing against the number one team in the country because, you know, taking somebody lightly is, is a recipe for, you know, for failure. And, you know, I think that, um, you know, obviously they have some weaknesses that we could, very, we can very well exploit. Um, you know, but they take a lot of shots. So if those shots fall, you know, it, it could be it could be a closer game than we would want it to be. All right, coach, break it down for us offensively, defensively. Uh, what's going to be the keys for tonight? Offensively, execution. Uh, we need to execute with spacing. We need to attack the basket. We need to draw some fouls. Um, we need to really make sure that we are playing to our strengths. Offensively, um, getting good shot, shot selection is crucial. Defensively, we need to uh, really play an up-tempo game. We need to force the tempo that we want um, by ball pressure and you know some full-court defense that you'll probably see tonight. So I think overall, if we, um, if we basically play how we've been playing, same tempo, same type of execution, um, movement without the ball, all of those things, and then rebound the ball as we've, um, we've been doing fairly decently over the past couple of games, then I think we should be okay tonight. Coach, best of luck. Thank you. Beef Up Brady's and Granger now features Pizza and Wing Wednesdays. Enjoy any of their large game time pizzas with two toppings for only $9.99, along with their award winning traditional boneless wings for just 75 cents each. They also have team trivia every Wednesday starting at 7 p.m. with prizes awarded. Beef's also has fresh Angus burgers, salads, and wraps. Located at State Road 23 and Bittersweet Road, they're open for lunch at 11 a.m. seven days a week. For more information, give them a call at 574-271-1415. Beef O'Brady's, good food, good sports. More students than ever are considering Holy Cross College for their future. Have you started to think about yours? Holy Cross College is a Catholic, co-ed, four-year institution of higher learning offering a great curriculum with 11 NAIA Varsity Sports. Holy Cross offers 21 majors and minors, so you can excel in the subjects you love. Holy Cross also has the lowest tuition rate of all the private colleges in Michiana. 90% of students receive financial aid with an average award of over $24,000. Holy Cross College students have resources, such as peer tutoring, writing, and math centers, to ensure your academic success. Most importantly, professors know who you are and your strengths and weaknesses. Together, building your future. Be part of the 524 students that enjoy a lively on-campus experience, offering a vibrant social life with countless clubs and intramural activities that enhance your college experience. Visit Holy Cross College now. The experience matters. hcc-nd.edu. 
Welcome back here to the Region Radio Sports Network, broadcasting live here on the campus of Holy Cross College here at the File Center. Adam Demery alongside me, Matt Copsey, Zach Ricos upstairs doing the camera work tonight here. His first experience at Holy Cross College. Want to welcome him into the broadcast as well. Let's take a look at these two teams a little bit closer by the numbers. Calumet St. Joe, the Crimson Wave, as I mentioned, coming in with a record of 1-17 overall, 0-8 in conference play that is headed up by Steve Helm in his first season at Calumet College. Last time out, the Crimson Wave lost at home against Clark out of Iowa, 85-43. to This is a team that was 9-23 a year ago. They felt went 3-14 and in conference play. The Crimson Wave right now averaging 43 points a game, giving up 81. They're being out-rebounded by 6, 42-36. 28 turnovers per contest for the Crimson Wave. They're shooting 31% from the floor, 26%. From beyond the arc, 56 three-point jump shots made so far this season. Eight assists, seven steals, two block shots, and they're shooting 62% from the charity stripe tonight. As Holy Cross coming in with a record of 7-13 and 13 overall, 4-5 and five in the Chicagoland Collegiate Athletic Conference. They're fresh off a home victory against Robert Morris University here on Saturday night. Amy Nespajani in her fifth season as the head coach for the Saints. Right now, the Saints getting outscored by five per game, 70 to 65. They're out rebounding their opponent by two, 42 to 40. They're turning the ball over at 20 times per contest, shooting 38% from the floor, 34% from beyond the arc. 153 three-point jump shots made so far this season. 12 assists, seven steals, four block shots, and they're shooting 62.8% from the charity stripe, 233 out of 371. Matt, as we take a look at this contest, your keys tonight for tonight's game on the women's side. I think the main thing for Holy Cross is that they just can't get complacent. They have to keep attacking the basket and, and keep playing their offense. I think they need they can't let the foot off the gas is the uh, old adage here. I, you know, we talked about it during the pregame show, Adam. You take a look at this record for uh, uh, Calumet St. Joe. Granted, they've won one game. They're all, they, they've struggled. The other, the other day they had two points in the first quarter. They shot 30% for the ball game against Clark. Those are things that Holy Cross has to come out and not – they can't think about that. They have to think as if they're playing Purdue Calumet. They have to think as if they're playing Marion or one of the top-ranked teams in the country because if you come out and you think that you're going to show up and win, that's when bad things are going to happen. So I just think that they need to continue playing with that confidence level they've established over these last couple of ball games. Well, and again, I go back to the last time these two teams met, Holy Cross getting the better of CCSJ, 75-65 to here at the file center to snap a 24-game losing streak. And very similar circumstances when you look at it, Matt, in terms of these two teams and the level of success that they've had coming in when they meet here at the file center. Yeah, and I just think uh, they just have to play with that uh, intensity level. They need to come out and uh, attack the basket early on, try to establish themselves uh, right away from the game uh, from the game, and try to get to the free throw line. I think an inside presence. This is a game where you could see Shelby Nelson have another double-double. All right, as we're getting ready to get things going here at the file center, the pep band here for the first time that we've seen him here on the Regional Radio Sports Network this season. Our good friend Pat O'Connor right now playing the trumpet over there in the pep band across the way here. As both teams are warming up, we're about a minute away from getting this game underway here. Once again, Adam Demery alongside me, Matt Copsey, Zach Ricos upstairs bringing you the picture. Want to remind our listeners, you can catch all Holy Cross men's and women's basketball here on the Regional Radio Sports Network all season long. We have a men's and women's doubleheader here tonight once again on the Regional Radio Sports Network on the men's side of things for Holy Cross they're looking to forget a tough loss on Saturday to a ranked Robert Morris team and for Calumet a, a tough opponent 12 and 6 overall coming into tonight for Holy Cross we're going to throw it over to Fred Schultz our PA announcer here at Holy Cross help us create a positive competitive environment by showing respect for tonight's student athletes officials and spectators Holy Cross College is committed to the NAIA Champions of Character Initiative and asks for your help to create a positive, competitive environment. Please enjoy tonight's game. Ladies and gentlemen, this time we ask you to please stand. Gentlemen, please remove your hats as we honor this great nation and this community with the singing of our national anthem by Abby Tomlin. Gleaming, ooh, 
with broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fights or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled Starting lineups for both teams here at the file center. To our left, Holy Cross in their home white uniforms. Maroon numbers in the front and back trimmed in gray. They will move from left to right on your computer screen or electronic device. Saints written in silver trimmed in maroon on the fronts of the jerseys. To my right, the Crimson Wave in their road maroon uniforms with the maroon numbers trimmed in white on the front and back. Crimson Wave written in maroon trimmed in white as well with a white trim down the shorts. They'll move from right to left on your computer screen or electronic device as it will be Shelby Nelson to jump for Holy Cross. Got to get her hair fixed over here to our left as we throw it over to Matt Copsey. Yeah, our, fi our officials for tonight's game are David, are Dave Wolper, Greg Humiston, Greg Humiston, and Bo Dunphy. It'll be Tierra Sanders to jump for the Crimson Wave as we are officially underway. Adam Demery alongside me, Matt Copsey, Zach Ricos upstairs bringing you the camera here tonight. Holy Cross wins the tip. They'll go against the 2-3 zone look from the Crimson Wave. It'll be Schulteis up top. Back to Barnes on the left wing. Pass inside for Streeter. She's got to track it down in the corner as the Saints are trying to find a hole in the defense. Here's Norris on the near wing. Three-point jump shot, no good. Streeter offensive rebound, and she puts it up and in. Holy Cross on the board first, 2 to nothing, with 9.33 to play here in the first quarter. Unfortunately, they didn't hit a three like they hit the last two ball games, but it still have a bucket. Here's Lou Cicero to the other side for the Crimson Wave. She gets her own offensive rebound. Great put back there. Missed box out for the Saints. We're all tied up at two apiece as both teams score on their opening drives. 9-14 to play here in the first quarter early on in this men's and women's doubleheader action. 
Norris over here to the near side, waits for a screen from Nelson to get Barnes open in the corner. That three won't go, and the rebound's tipped out, and an offense, or excuse me, a rebound, or foul on the rebound against Holy Cross, and they're going to get taken Schultz ice early on. That'll be the first team foul. The first foul of the ball game comes 59 seconds into it. Yeah, a little bit of a push going after the basketball there. Looks like Holy Cross is going to come out a little bit of a uh, full court press here. Looks like a 1-2-2, two, two, a 2-2-1 two, two, trap here it looks like. As Kerry Barnes gets the steal off the inbound, it's blocked that time, though, on the other side for the Crimson Wave by Sanders. And back come the Crimson Wave from right to left. On the drive on the other side, layup too strong off the backboard by Kissel. And back come the Saints the other way. Barnes on that left wing, up top for Norris. Swings it for Schulteis, near wing, three-point jump shot. That's off the mark. The Saints 0 for 3 from beyond the arc here, as Matt mentioned it, uh, a cold start. And in terms of what we've seen the last two games against Purdue Cal and Robert Morris on Saturday. Well, I think that's an uh, indication that they should start uh, pounding the ball inside. That looks like to be a turnover. That's two turnovers ready for the Crimson Wave. So a little bit of a sloppy start for these two teams when you take a look at it. Two to two, your score, a minute and a half into this ball game. Holy Cross able to find the rim right now as they try to break down this 2-3 zone. Streeter gets inside the lane around one Defender that time in Sanders, and she can't get the layup to go. Back come the Crimson Way the other way. Here's Kissel in transition, and she turns it over. She went up for the layup. It was poked free, or she lost the handle on it, rather, up on the way up, and it'll be out of bounds. Back come the Saints the other way. Back-to-back -to -back turnovers for the Crimson Wave here a couple minutes into this ball game. Schulteis going to drive inside the lane and turn it right back over, though, as Kissel comes away with it. The ball stripped away. From Tegan Schulteis. Holy Cross, one of six from the field, one turnover. Two to two, still your score. 7.45 to play here in the first half. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Over on the far side is Saez with the basketball. She swings it over to the corner for Moore. Moore gets it down low that time. Lo Cicero without a shot there. She misses on the play. The rebound for Sanders won't go on the putback, and back come the Saints after a couple of misses for the Crimson Wave. Schulteis quickly in transition. Nice pass for Shelby Nelson. She's knocked to the ground. No call, but two points up on the board for the Saints. They take the lead back, 4-2. to two. Nelson with her first basket, almost a turnover there. Lo Cicero now inside for Sanders. She gets around Schulteis, and the layup on the near side will go. We're all tied up once again at four apiece with seven minutes to play here in the first quarter. Here's Norris in transition with a three. Holy Cross starting to find a little bit of offense. They hit two for two on the last two field goals. A five-point rally for the Saints. They lead 7-4, to four, and here comes a turnover, or it was almost a turnover, off the knee that time of Nelson. Lo Cicero with the 12-footer, and she puts it up and in. Both teams starting to find some offense here in the last 45 seconds. And Lo Cicero with four of the six points for Calumet. Here's Nelson on the other side. That seven-footer won't fall, and the rebound comes out for Jenna Lo Cicero. Back come the Crimson Wave now. Saez will walk it up across the timeline as she'll be guarded by Schulteis. Holy Cross going back and forth between a half-court defensive look and a full-court defensive look. Up top, here's a three-point jump shot. That's off the mark that time, and an offense, or excuse me, and a rebound comes out for Shelby Nelson. Now Norris in transition, trying to get around her man and Dolores Moore up for Nelson. 15-footer from the free throw line. That's going to be off the mark, and the rebound quickly comes out to Saez. Here's Kiss. Kissel with the basketball in transition. She can't get the layup to go. Rebound comes out for Shelby Nelson. Inside of six minutes. Back comes Schulteis the other way. She works to her right back up. 15-foot jump shot won't go. And the ball is tipped out of bounds off the hands of Nelson. And a stoppage in play will get a substitution for the Crimson Wave as Stephanie Daniels, a 5'7 junior out of Harvey, Illinois, comes into the game for the first time tonight. It looks like Holy Cross right now is settling for jump shots that are not the ones they should be taking. They should be trying to attack the basket. Slow start for both teams. 5.43 to play here in the first quarter. Here's Streeter off the steal. Good defensive pressure from Schulteis to force the turnover. Barnes the other way. Gets the layup to go in transition. Those are the easy buckets that are going to string together some runs for Holy Cross. They lead 9-6 to six with 5.28 to play here in the first quarter. That's what Holy Cross needs to do is use their defense to create the transition game offensively. Daniels now from the right elbow, drives inside the lane, tries to get around Streeter. Her shot won't go. The ball tipped out of bounds off the hands of Keisha Streeter, and the Crimson Wave will inbound it with a fresh shot clock underneath their own basket on the far side. 3-10 for, uh, uh, for Calumet to start the game. Here's a 17-foot jump shot. That one off the mark that time for 
Julissa Saez. Here's Schulteis in transition. Another layup for Kerry Barnes. The transition offense is there for Holy Cross, and they're starting to take advantage of it. Three minutes, or excuse me, four minutes into this game, we got a five-point lead for Holy Cross. Eleven to six, your score. Yeah, biggest lead of the night. 4-0 run for the Saints. Up top is Moore. Swings it over for Kissel down low, looking for. Cicero and it's tapped out of bounds off the hands of Shelby Nelson and that will bring us to our first media timeout. 4.46 to play here in the first quarter, 11 to 6 your score. Holy Cross with the lead. You're watching Holy Cross basketball right here on the Regional Radio Sports Network. More students than ever are considering Holy Cross College for their future. Have you started to think about yours? Holy Cross College is a Catholic, co-ed, four-year institution of higher learning, offering a great curriculum with 11 NAIA varsity sports. Holy Cross offers 21 majors and minors, so you can excel in the subjects you love. Holy Cross also has the lowest tuition rate of all the private colleges in Michiana. 90% of students receive financial aid with an average award of over $24,000. Holy Cross College students have resources, such as peer tutoring, writing, and math centers, to ensure your academic success. Most importantly, professors know who you are and your strengths and weaknesses. Together, building your future. Be part of the 524 students that enjoy a lively on-campus experience, offering a vibrant social life with countless clubs and intramural activities that enhance your college experience. Visit Holy Cross College now. The experience matters. hcc-nd.edu. Welcome back here to the Regional Radio Sports Network, broadcasting live here on www.rrsn.com, your home for all Holy Cross College basketball events. Let's throw over to Matt Copsies for some first quarter numbers as we're at the 446 mark. Holy Cross leads Calumet S- College of St. Joseph 11 to 6. Calumet St. Joe 3 of 11 from the field, 27%. Holy Cross 5 of 13 for 39%. So the Crimson Wave will inbound it underneath their own basket. Here's Moore in the corner with a three off the inbounds pass. That one won't fall. Shayna Anderson on the floor for the first time here tonight as she replaces, replaces Jessica Norris in the lineup. Holy Cross has led all night long here as they continue to move against this 2-3 zone look. Here's a long three from Schulteis off the mark. Nelson with the rebound, can't get it to go. Streeter with another offensive rebound, and then she's fouled. It looks like they're going to get Stephanie Daniels with the foul for the Crimson Wave. That'll be her first team first for the Crimson Wave here at the 425 mark of the opening quarter. Schulteis to inbound for the Saints. Underneath their own basket on the far side from our location. She gets it to Anderson. Back to Schulteis in the corner. Got away with the travel there. She splits the double team layup up and in off the backboard. Tagging Schulteis. A little bit of a teardrop off the side here. 13 to 6 your score. Holy Cross with its largest lead of the night with 410 to play here in the first quarter. First basket of the night for the former Mishawaka standout. Saez now swings it over for Kissel in the corner. She gets around the screen. Set by Daniels. Here's Lo Cicero with the shot from the left elbow. Nice rebound offensively that time for Stephanie Daniels. And the 5'7 junior gets the put back to go. She averages seven rebounds per contest, and that's a big one there. And that's one thing that uh, Calumet St. Joe is getting, offensive rebounds. That's their fifth one already. Shayna Anderson works to her right, gets it out for Carrie Barnes. Nice pass inside for Streeter. She tried to get it around there for Nelson. It went off the foot that time of Lo Cicero. As we get a couple of substitutions for the Crimson Wave, we'll see Mackenzie Sullivan, the 5'7 freshman out of Chesterton, Indiana, in for the first time tonight. And back on the floor will be Tierra Sanders, the 5'10 junior. Here's Nelson on the near side block from Schulteis. Now for Anderson in the corner. Three-point jump shot's going to be short. Rebound tipped around. Streeter comes away with it. Her shot is blocked that time, and it's blocked all the way out to Kerry Barnes at the top of the key. Fresh shot clock for the Saints, 3.22 to play in the quarter. Nelson tries to lob that one in and turns it over. Nice job by Brittany Kissel to be in the passing lane and get the seal there. Second turnover for the Saints. Over here on the near side, Sullivan in the, on the wing up top for Kissel as they try and reverse it back over to the right. And a lob inside that time from Saez is going to be a turnover. She wanted a call from the official on the far side. Won't get it back Come the Saints as we're inside of three minutes to play in quarter number one. Anderson, left wing to Schulteis. Back for Anderson in the corner now. Crosses it over for Kerry Barnes with 13 seconds on the shot clock. Barnes, wraparound pass to the right short corner for Nelson. Nelson faces some pressure, gets it back for Barnes. Three-point jump shot's off the mark. And the rebound comes out now for Tierra Sanders. Five-point advantage still for the Saints. And Schulteis gets the steal on the full-court pressure for the easy layup. 
15-8, your score now. Lead back up to 7, 2.25 to play here in quarter number one. And that's where Holy Cross has been at their best when they've been able to turn turnovers into points. Saez now on the far side. It's the screen, works to her left, wraparound pass to the left elbow, 15-foot jump shot's going to be off the mark that time for Stephanie Daniels, and the rebound comes out for Carrie Barnes. Barnes quickly in transition for Schulteis along the baseline, layup up and in. Tegan Schulteis now running the court in the open transition. Nice find that time by Carrie Barnes, 17-8, your score. 154 to play in the quarter as Saez can't get the layup to go. The rebound comes out for Sanders to Sullivan, swing pass for Kissel. Now Brittany Kissel tries to work to her right, dop, lobs it in that side that time for Daniels, and travel. Stephanie Daniels travel with the basketball. Turnover number seven for uh, Calumet St. Joe. Tegan Schulteis has scored the last six points for the Saints to give them the nine-point lead here. 141 left in the opening period. Alicia McIntosh, Aaron Lee, Carmen Lowe, new on the floor now for Holy Cross. McIntosh will be the point guard. She gets it across the timeline as the Crimson Wave drop into a 2-3 zone look. Carmen Lowe up top. Now over here to the near side for Anderson. She works her way to the left, gets inside the lane and gets the seven-foot floater to go. 19-8, your score, Holy Cross by 11. 1-18 to play here in the first quarter. Holy Cross on a 12-2 run right now to get the lead up to double digits. Here's Saez on the drive, layup up and in. She took it all the way down along the baseline, got around her defender in McIntosh and gets the shot to go. Back come the Saints the other way. 19-10, your score inside of a minute to play in the first quarter. Anderson, left corner, three-point jump shot, in and out no good, and the rebound will come out now for Mackenzie Sullivan, who's fouled by Alicia McIntosh. That's going to be second team foul for Holy Cross. McIntosh is first. McIntosh going to put some pressure on size as she brings the ball up the court. Saez gets it across the timeline. And now we'll get it out for Kissel. Kissel works to her right, comes back with a nice pass down low for Sanders. And we're going to have a jump ball. It will be favoring the Crimson Wave. Shot clock will stay at 14. 37 seconds left here in the first quarter as Holy Cross is enjoying a 19-10 lead. They've led the entire way so far. Here's the lob off the inbounds, a miscommunication for the Crimson Wave, but Saez comes away to recover it for the visitors. Sullivan drops it down for Sanders. She guarded by Streeter. Swings it out for Kissel. Near wing. Three-point jump shots up. It's off the mark. Offensive rebound for Sanders and the putback will go. 19-12 your score off the two from Sanders and the Saints can hold for the last shot here. Sanders now with, uh, that's her second basket to go with six. Nice rebounds. job by Carmen Lowe on the other way as Aaron Leak finds her on the far side block. She gets the layup to go to get the lead back up to nine. 21-12. The Crimson Wave can hold for the last shot. Here with five seconds to play. Three seconds left. Kissel drive. Shot up. No good. Ball tipped around. Streeter comes away with it. The buzzer will sound, and that will do it for the first quarter. Ten minutes in the books. The Saints with a nine-point advantage, 21-12. to 12. We'll be back after this. You're watching Holy Cross Basketball right here on the Regional Radio Sports Network. The men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. Welcome back here to the Regional Radio Sports Network. Adam Demery alongside me, Matt Copsey. 21 to 12, your score after 10 minutes of play. The first quarter is over, and the Saints have enjoyed a lead the entire way so far here as they'll get the ball to start the second quarter, moving from left to right. In their home uniforms, let's throw over to Matt Copsey for some first quarter numbers. Uh, Purdue, excuse me, Calumet St. Joe, 6 of 20 from the field for 30%. We're going to have a double dribble here on Holy Cross. That'll be their fourth turnover of the ball game. The uh, 
Crimson Wave 30% from the field. Holy Cross 10 out of 24 for 42%, but they're only 1 out of 8 from 3-point range for, 12, for 13%. Neither team shot a free throw in the opening quarter. So back come the Crimson Wave from right to left. Their first possession here in the second quarter is a shot from Stephanie Daniels, and that'll go off the mark, and the rebound will come out for Holy Cross. Aaron Leak the other way, up ahead for McIntosh now. Dumps it, dumps it down low that time for Carmen Lowe, but Sanders is there for her third block of the night. Great job on the help defense, and that forces a turnover there. Sanders averages two blocks per contest. She's already above that here in the first half. Sullivan now, top of the key, three-point jump shots off the mark. McIntosh taps it around, and Carmen Lowe comes away with the rebound for the Saints as they'll move from left to right. 9.05 to play here in the first half. Neither team scored so far in the second quarter. The second offensive possession for the Saints says Anderson in the left short corner, and it gets stolen away that time by Kissel. Brittany Kissel comes away with it. McIntosh with a hustle play defensively. She's shoved to the ground. The ball goes out of bounds. It will remain Crimson Wave possession. Looks like Holy Cross is going to come into a little uh, pressure here, a little trap. Yeah, Amy Nespajani talked about in her pregame comments that we might see some full court press from her team throughout the night as this one's through the hands that time of Tierra Sanders. Wasn't ready for the pass, and it will be Holy Cross basketball as a result. Eight turnovers now for the Crimson Wave, five for Holy Cross. So Aaron Leak will now be the point guard for the Saints on this possession. Raven Delph in the game for the first time tonight. McIntosh lobs it down for Lowe. She gets double team quickly back out for Aaron Leak. The runner inside the lane won't go. Lowe with the rebound offensively for the Saints. She picks her dribble up and then loses possession of the basketball. Kissel in the corner. Trying to find an open teammate. She does that time in Jalissa Saez. Saez over now for Kissel and it's through the hands of Brittany Kissel. Another turnover for the Crimson Wave. An ugly start here to the second quarter, Matt. And that's the one thing you can tell by the fact that they're shooting 30%, but in the opening quarter they had 15 rebounds, seven of them which were on the offensive end. They actually led the battle of the boards 15-12. Here's Anderson in the corner with a three-point jump shot. She knocks it down, her first of the night. And on the season for Shana Anderson, that's three-pointer number 28. It gives her team the largest lead of the night, 24-12. to Crimson Wave unable to inbound it in time, and they're going to call a timeout before the five-second Violation. It will be the first timeout taken by Steve Helm, his use it or lose it timeout. It'll be a 30 second timeout. We want to thank our friends over at Beef O'Brady's. Beef O'Brady's and Granger is the place to go on Fridays before or after the game. Locally owned and operated for nine years, they are a family oriented, oriented business featuring a private party room with seating for up to 60 people, along with an outside patio area that can seat up to 20 guests. Located at State Road 23 and Bittersweet Road, Beef's has daily specials Monday through Wednesday and offers dine in and carry out service. They're also the spot to watch all the NFL game playoff games this coming Saturday or Sunday, as well as college basketball. For more information, give them a call at 574-271-1415. Beef O'Brady's good food, good sports. 758 left to play here in the first half. 24 to 12 your score. Holy Cross with a 12 point advantage, but as we mentioned, Matt, it's uh, besides that 3 point field goal for Shane Anderson, we haven't seen any shots go in. We've seen a number of turnovers for each team right now and 9 turnovers for Calumet St. Joe and we have 6 turnovers for the home team in Holy Cross. And Holy Cross 2-9 from three-point range. Uh, uh, Calumet St. Joe leading the battle of the boards 16-15 at this point, which goes to show me uh, seven offensive boards for Calumet St. Joe, six for Holy Cross, and that uh, is tell in a t- t- telltale from the uh, shooting percentage, 6 of 22, 11 of 27. A couple of substitutions for Holy Cross. We'll get those to you in a second here as Kissel's in the corner. She's going to drive along the baseline against Aaron Leak, and she stepped out of bounds. Another turnover forced by the Saints defense. Good defense by Aaron Leak that time. Aaron Leak will be joined by Tegan Schultz, Shelby Nelson back on the floor as well. Alicia McIntosh and Raven Delph round out the five on the floor for the home team. Three possessions, uh, last three possessions for, for, for Calumet St. Joe have resulted in turnovers. Here's Schultz Ice up top with a three-point jump shot. Good find from Aaron Leak. And the Saints with a couple of three-pointers giving them a 15-point lead here in the second quarter with 7.25 to play in quarter number two. Schultz Ice now at nine. She's knocked down her last four shots. It was a kick for Leak in the corner as we're going to get Dolores Moore back on the floor. She'll replace Kissel. 
It'll be Dolores Moore to inbounds for the Crimson Wave underneath their own basket on the far side. 22 seconds on the shot clock for the visitors. As Moore trying to find Sanders, she does for a moment, but Raven Delph got a hand on the pass and was able to knock it free. It'll still be Crimson Wave basketball, but good recognition by the freshman in Raven Delph. Yeah, loose ball, just got her hands on it. Uh, wasn't able to come up with it, though. So Moore with the lob inside, deflected by Aaron Leak, and here comes a steal for the Saints. Back comes Schulteis the other way. In transition, Tegan, nice no-look pass for McIntosh. Her lamp's blocked, though, by Sanders. Back come the Crimson Wave the other way. Block number four for Sierra Sanders as the Saints come away with a steal defensively on in response. Here's Leak the other way. Lamp up and in along the baseline. She just floated that one over the hands of Tierra Sanders. First basket for Leak, and that's five straight possessions with five turnovers for Calumet St. Joe. So Saez gets it up top for Sanders. Guarded by Nelson with 15 seconds on the shot clock. Here's Cicero as she pulls up from 15 over Raven Delft. She can't get the shot to go, and the rebound comes out for Schulteis. Quickly up ahead for Leak now in the corner. Leak to Schulteis. Long three for Tegan. She can't get the shot to go. Nelson somehow almost she saved it. On the line. I was just about to say that would have been a, an interesting save but a great hustle play by Shelby Nelson as she almost got it back to her teammate in Alicia McIntosh. Well, no one blocked her out, and she was able to get a, a path to the ball. Unfortunately, she was right by the uh, end line. Andrea Zamora into the game for the first time tonight for the Crimson Wave. Wearing jersey number 33 as Saez is fouled along the far side by Alicia McIntosh. That'll be McIntosh's second personal. Yeah, first on the team here in the quarter. There have only been four total fouls called in the game. Three on Holy Cross and one on Calumet St. Joe. So four out of the five starters now on the floor as Carrie Barnes and Jessica Norris check back into the game. It'll be more in the corner. She tries to lob it down low for Lo Cicero. And Shelby Nelson and Raven Delph right there to deflect it out of bounds. So it'll be Crimson Wave basketball to inter- inbound underneath their own basket on the far side. Here's the pass inside up top for Lo Cicero now. Stops at the right elbow, gets it back out for Saez, and she'll reset the offense with 18 seconds on the shot clock. Saez works to her left, gets the screen, now goes back to her right, though Cicero from the right elbow, 15-foot jump shot, that's going to be short, and the rebound comes out for the Saints. Schulteis now up ahead, here's Delph on the near side, block with a layup for the Saints, and she puts two more up on the board, as Holy Cross with its largest lead of the night, 19, 31 to 12, 545 to play. Here in the first half. Holy Cross on a 12-0 run going back to the end of the first quarter. They're starting to really open things up here as the Crimson Wave right now still scoreless in quarter number two. That pass is going to be out of bounds, thrown off by Los Cicero. That's 13 turnovers now for the Crimson Wave. Their last, their last seven posse- of their last eight possessions, they've had six turnovers. Barnes gets it out for Schulteis now to Nelson. She bobbled it at first, comes back for Barnes in the near wing. Three-point jump shot is good. Carrie Barnes, the senior out of Fort Wayne Snyder High School with a three-point jump shot there. That's number 39 on the season as the Saints lead 34-12. to Saez on the other side. Three-point jump shot in, out, and back out again as Carrie Barnes will get the rebound. Barnes now with seven points. That's her fourth rebound. Here's Nelson on the drive. Wraparound pass for Norris. Wide open layup. And a timeout taken by the Crimson Wave. 4.54 to play here in the first half. 36 to 12. Your score. We're going to take a timeout ourselves as that will be the media timeout. You're listening and watching Holy Cross Basketball right here on the Regional Radio Sports Network. Advantage. General George Washington. More students than ever are considering Holy Cross College for their future. Have you started to think about yours? Holy Cross College is a Catholic, co-ed, four-year institution of higher learning, offering a great curriculum with 11 NAIA varsity sports. Holy Cross offers 21 majors and minors, so you can excel in the subjects you love. Holy Cross also has the lowest tuition rate of all the private colleges in Michiana. 90% of students receive financial aid with an average award of over $24,000. Holy Cross College students have resources, 
such as peer tutoring, writing, and math centers to ensure your academic success. Most importantly, professors know who you are and your strengths and weaknesses. Together, building your future. Be part of the 524 students that enjoy a lively on-campus experience, offering a vibrant social life with countless clubs and intramural activities that enhance your college experience. Visit Holy Cross College now. The experience matters. hcc-nd.edu. Back live here on the Regional Radio Sports Network. Adam Demery alongside me, Matt Copsey. Zach Rico's upstairs bringing you the picture here as we're back in action at Holy Cross. Tegan Schulte is trying to get a hand in the passing lanes on the far side. It'll be out of bounds, deflected off of Schulte, so Crimson Wave will keep possession. 16 seconds left from the shot clock here in a 36-12 ball game that has Holy Cross ahead by 24 here in the second quarter. Yeah, it's a... 17-0 run right now. And there's the run ended right there. The broadcaster's jinx for Matt Copsey as Brittany Kissel gets the layup to go on the far side. Well, that's, their, that's Kissel's first basket and the first basket of the quarter for the Crimson Wave. Schulteis now back for Norris on the left wing. Up top for Schulteis. Now here's Kerry Barnes going against the 2-3 zone. Look for the Crimson Wave. Streeter now inside the lane, gets around one defender and gets the layup to go on the near side. Keisha Streeter, the freshman out of Oklahoma with a nice move there for her first bucket of the night. Four points now for Streeter. 38-14, your score, Holy Cross with the lead inside of four minutes to play. Kissel angles to her right, ball deflected by Schulte. She gets around one defender and gets to the steal. Up ahead for Norris on the layup on transition. And Holy Cross will take advantage with another bucket off of a turnover. 40-14, to 14, your score, 3.38 to play here in the first half. A lot of unselfish play by Holy Cross here. You saw earlier Shelby Nelson do one to uh, get a pass to Norris, and then Schulteis there do, does it as well. Kissel throws it back, trying to find her teammate in Daniels instead. The Crimson Wave will have to track it down. There's a three in the corner for Saez. That one won't go, and Kerry Barnes takes it up for Holy Cross. Nice pass inside for Streeter. She gets around a couple of defenders and gets inside for the layup on the near side. 42-14, Holy Cross opening up the floodgates here at the Vile Center with three minutes to play here in the first half. Took a little while for them to get on track, but they've uh, really turned it on here in the last uh, seven or eight minutes. Here's Kissel angling to her left in between the circles now. Guarded by Streeter, gets the screen. Now up top for Los Cicero. Swing pass for Saez. Pass fake to the right, comes back to her left. This time was looking for Mackenzie Sullivan, and it'll go out of bounds. Sullivan couldn't handle the pass, and it'll be another turnover as Leak will come in for Schulteis. Norris will be replaced on the floor by Madison Tomlin, the 5'4 freshman out of South Central High School. We haven't seen her in the last couple of games. Yeah, she's been dealing, dealing with some health issues, I was told, but she's back out on the court now. Tomlin averaging or has eight points total on the season so far here for Holy Cross. Here's Barnes in the corner. Shot fake goes along the baseline, gets the layup on the near side, but it's short, and the missed layup is going to give a rebound for the Crimson Wave. I think that was a matter of she just went a little bit too far underneath the basket. Here's Saez the other way for the Crimson Wave. Get around Tomlin, go along the baseline, tries the one-handed pass, but Streeter was there to stick her leg out and deflect it out of bounds. It'll be Crimson Wave basketball underneath their own basket here to the near side with 2.12 to play here in the first half. Here comes the inbounds pass out for Saez now. Kissel out to the right. 13 seconds on the shot clock. She's going to push off, gets away with it. Shot up, no good. And Shelby Nelson grabs the board for the Saints. Inside of two minutes to play. Only one foul called here in the second quarter. We still haven't seen a team at the free throw line yet. Yeah, there have only been four uh, fouls whistled in the entire game. Three on Holy Cross and only one on uh, Calumet St. Joe. Aaron Leak inside for Streeter. She splits the double team and she'll drive to the basket and she'll be fouled just as we say that. She'll head to the line for two as Andrea Samora with the foul for the Crimson Wave. That'll be the first team foul here in the quarter on the Crimson Wave, and Keisha Streeter heading to the free throw line for the first time tonight. She's got six points, make 60, it seven. 60% free throw shooter coming into tonight. It's one of the first two. Yeah, 
Second free throw is up. This one is off the mark, but Streeter falls her way to the basket, gets her own offensive rebound, and creates another opportunity for her team. Once again, no box out there and able to come up with the basketball. Great hustle by Holy Cross, specifically Keisha Streeter, who has the basketball now driving the lane. Layup won't go. Rebound tipped around, and Zamora comes away with it for the Crimson Wave. 1.18 to play here in the first half. Kissel with the 15-footer. She puts it up and in. Great response for the Crimson Wave. 43-16 your score. Holy Cross with the lead. Kissel with all four points uh, for uh, Calumet St. Joe here in the quarter. Here's Kerry Barnes now on the near side wing. Cross-court pass for Leak. Long three-point jump shot for Aaron Leak will be off the mark. Streeter can't catch up with it. It'll be out of bounds in the Crimson Wave with 53 seconds left in the half. We'll take over from right to left. It's been all Holy Cross as they've led the entire way as here Saez with a 15-foot jump shot inside, just inside the free throw line. A nice offensive rebound for Stephanie Daniels. She gets the put back to go. Daniels with her second basket. Only six points scored by the Crimson Wave here in the second quarter as Carrie Barnes gets the layup up and in for Holy Cross. Barnes now at nine. Shot clock is off, so the Crimson Wave, if they choose to, can hold for the last shot here. Saez. Hands it off for Kissel. Brittany Kissel up top. Looking to her left. Stops. Now looking to come back to her right. She does. Saez now around the screen. No look pass. Is stolen away by Aaron Leak. Six seconds left here in the first half. Back comes Holy Cross the other way. Leak still with the basketball. Up ahead for Nelson. And Nelson gets the layup at the buzzer here on the near side to give two more points for Holy Cross. They'll head into halftime with a 47-18 lead here as we take a quick two-minute break. When we come back, Pat O'Connor and Matt Copsey will break down the first half. That's all coming up as you're watching Holy Cross basketball right here on the Regional Radio Sports Network. More students than ever are considering Holy Cross College for their future. Have you started to think about yours? Holy Cross College is a Catholic, co-ed, four-year institution of higher learning, offering a great curriculum with 11 NAIA varsity sports. Holy Cross offers 21 majors and minors, so you can excel in the subjects you love. Holy Cross also has the lowest tuition rate of all the private colleges in Michiana. 90% of students receive financial aid with an average award of over $24,000. Holy Cross College students have resources such as peer tutoring, writing, and math centers to ensure your academic success. Most importantly, professors know who you are and your strengths and weaknesses. Together, building your future. Be part of the 524 students that enjoy a lively on-campus experience, offering a vibrant social life with countless clubs and intramural activities that enhance your college experience. Visit Holy Cross College now. The experience matters. hcc-nd.edu Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. Early to bed, early to rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. And all was Benjamin Franklin wise. So you actually think electricity can pass through metal? Ha! Ben Franklin, go fly a kite! Excellent idea. W where are my keys? Besides the bifocals, Ben invented the Franklin Up stone, go! the odometer, Whoa. Oh, and the lightning rod. <laughs> Ingenuity, pass it on. From the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com. Welcome back to Holy Cross College Women's Basketball here on the Regional Radio Sports Network. I'm Pat O'Connor filling in for Adam Demery here on the Halftime Show alongside Matt Copsey. 
Matt, coming off a big win on Saturday, the women, you know, come out probably a lesser opponent on paper here, and they have a huge lead at halftime, 47-18. What did you like about the Saints game here in the first half? Well, I thought in the early going they were a little sluggish. You know, they it seemed like they were settling for jump shots. They weren't being aggressive, taking the ball to the basket. And then about the last two, three minutes of the first quarter, you saw them, you saw them kind of turn things up defensively. They started to use their defense to create opportunities on the offensive game. They got the transition game going. And then in the second quarter there was a stretch where uh, Calumet had six straight possessions where they didn't get off a shot and they turned the ball over and Holy Cross was able to come down and convert them into points so I just think that the fact that Holy Cross was able to get into a rhythm offensively for about the last nine or ten minutes about the last 13 minutes of the half I think really helped them get this lead. Yeah I think it was one of those cases maybe of playing down your opponent especially coming off a huge game on Saturday against Robert Morris and they come out here maybe they they do start a little sluggish but like you said a great second quarter. Well well, and that's one of the things I kept mentioning during the pregame show and I kept mentioning to Adam is I said you take a look at their record they're one in 17 they've struggled offensively with everything and I said Holy Cross has gone through that certain things themselves I said if they come out and try to uh, think that Calumet St. Joe isn't going to be a competitive team, then they've got another thing coming to them. And I don't know if they did that in the early going. I just think that Holy Cross was, they, they were settling for the threes. They were settling for jump shots instead of trying to take the ball to the basket. And I mentioned that early on, that they needed to get that transition game going. And once they did, you saw Tegan Schulte score six quick points there for them. I think everybody else kind of fed off her enthusiasm, and then they were able to get some good shots. And I thought defensively they did a good job of forcing uh, Calumet St. Joe into taking Making some shots they didn't want to, you got the, they got them out of their rhythm offensively. And I think defensively, they, they kind of started in uh, maybe three-quarter court press, and, and they, they seemed to back off out of that into a man-to-man. What was behind that defensive change, you think, for Coach Nespajani? Well, I just think it was a matter that they saw that they were they were coming down, and they really were... It, honestly, it looked like Calumet St. Joe really wasn't any type of set offensively. So I thought that it, after they come on, after them defensively, you force them out of their rhythm and put them into a situation where they were throwing the ball away and that allowed Holy Cross to just get into a, um, a, a rhythm offensively. You saw them with a little bit of trap over here in the backcourt as well. That is Matt Copsey. I'm Pat O'Connor. We're going to take a quick break here on this halftime show. You hear the Holy Cross pep band in the background. We sound pretty good, don't we? Yeah, you do. You guys are doing a great job. It's uh, we're, we're, That's one thing we've kind of missed here in the early going. I know with the break and everything and uh, just coming back to school, is that going to become a regular occurrence now? It should be. We're excited to be back. It's halftime here at the File Center, the McKenna Arena at the File Center at Holy Cross College. Holy Cross women's up 47-18 to 18 at the break. We're going to take a quick break ourselves and be back with more stats from the first half. You're listening to the Regional Radio Sports Network. The entire world watched. They watched each step down the rungs of that small ladder, one after another, and waited with great anticipation for that last step. That's one small step for man, one At that moment, humanity saw the impossible become the possible, and today the sky is not the limit. Achievement. Pass it on from the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com. Some people would call him a loser. He ran for state office. He was beaten. He started a business. He failed. He ran for Congress. He lost. He was nominated for vice president. He lost again. But he knew only those who never tried are the real losers. And Abraham Lincoln was no loser. Persistence. Pass it on. From the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com. College softball players Mallory Holtman and Liz Wallace know winning isn't everything. It's how you hold your head at the end of the game and how you walk off the field. These two athletes carried their opponent around the bases after she injured herself hitting the winning home run. What are they doing? Whether you win or lose on the field, if you did the right thing, then you did win. And they showed us the right thing is sportsmanship. Pass it on from the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com. Welcome back to Holy Cross College Women's Basketball here on the Regional Radio Sports Network. It's halftime. The Saints have a big lead, 47-18. I'm going to toss it over to Matt Copsey for some halftime stats. Thanks, Pat. Uh, for Calumet College in the first half, Brittany Kissel, 2 of 7 from the field for 4 points. Jenna Lo Cicero, 2 of 7 from the field for 4 points. You had Julissa Saez, 1 of, four for, 1 of 6 from the field for 2 points. 
Dolores Moore, 0 of 2 from the field, did not score. Tierra Sanders, 2 of 3 from the field for 4 points. She also had 5 rebounds. Stephanie Daniels, 2 of 5 from the field for 4 points. Mackenzie Sullivan, 0 of 1 from the field. And Andrea Zamora played did, did, but did not score. 9 of 31 in the first half from the field for the Crimson Wave for 29%. They were 0 of 6 from 3-point range and did not attempt a free throw. For Holy Cross, Keisha Streeter, 3 of 6 from the field, 1 of 2 from the free throw line, 7 points. Shelby Nelson, 2 of 5 from the field for 4 points. She also had 4 rebounds. Carrie Barnes, 4 of 8 from the field for 9 points. Jessica Norris, 3 of 4 from the field for 7 points. Tegan Schulteis, 4 of 8 from the field for a game-high 9. She also has 9 points along with Carrie Barnes. Aaron Leak, 1 of 3 from the field for 2 points. Alicia McIntosh missed her only shot. Madison Tomlin played but did not score. Shana Anderson, 2 of 4 from the field for 5 points. Raven Delp, 1 of 1 from the field for 2 points. And Carmen Lowe, 1 of 2 from the field for 2 points. Matt, you look at the Saints roster, I'm, I'm looking at nine different players have scored in the first half. In a game like this, you know, y- you can definitely expect Coach Amy to empty her bench. She already has in the first half, really. How do you use a game like this, you know, not, not to necessarily play down your competition, but maybe work on some specific things that you've been trying to do in practice? Well, I think a game like this is perfect for Coach Nespagiani to use different combinations to use at different times. You, maybe you have a situation where you have all, you, all your big players out there on the court at one time, and you try to see what happens that way. Maybe you try a smaller lineup. Maybe you use all your upperclassmen. I saw her, she had... Just different combinations. I think that's one of the things a game like this allows you that luxury to do because usually in a, uh, like the last couple games, the Purdue Calumet game and the Robert Morris game, you somewhat have to stay with the, the, the uh, players that are giving you the hot hand and the players that give you the best chance to win. But in a situation like this, I think you can use some of the freshmen. Maybe she can use all the freshmen out there at one time just to try to make different things happen because I think that's opportunities will come like that over the course of the rest of the season where there might be a situation where foul trouble, somebody might have to come into a situation. I know Madison Tomlin's missed the last couple games with some uh, health issues. She's back in the game, so I think for her I think the second half's an opportunity for her to kind of get her legs back and maybe just an opportunity to get some game action. And on the other side, Matt, you know, I think everyone's been on this side of of a game when, you know, you're down by about 30 points at halftime. Coach Steve Helm of the Crimson Wave, what do you do in a game like this? You know, obviously you have to keep the girls motivated, keep them ready, but you know, how do you navigate a second half like this? Well, it's obvious that he's trying to build, he, being this his first year, he's trying to build a program over here. I think all you can do is just have the girls come out and uh, try to use the combinations and try to execute what the game plan is you want to do. You, you, it isn't one of these situations where you that you say you scrap everything and try to go from normal. In a, the, the games, you know, the situations at hand, you just have to keep running the uh, sets out there. You've got to try to look for the best opportunities you had. Uh, the one thing, if there's a positive path to come out of it for them in the first half was they st- they hung with uh, Holy Cross rebounding. Holy Cross only had a 22 to 21 rebounding margin and they both had eight offensive rebounds which, you know, although they're missing shots, they were able to uh, come up with some second and third opportunities. All right, we're going to be back with the second half in just a moment. We're going to take one more quick break. Again, you're listening to Holy Cross College Women's Basketball on the Regional Radio Sports Network. This is Grace Loopy from Laguna Niguel, California. Holy Cross College at Notre Dame, Indiana is a four-year college of distinction. We offer a personal educational experience with local and global learning. When you're thinking of college, consider Holy Cross College at Notre Dame, Indiana. Holy Cross College. The experience matters. This is Lucas Fred from Chicago, Illinois. I chose Holy Cross for my college career. Great economics, a global view, attractive tuition rates, and scholarship opportunities made sense to me. I get close personal attention at Holy Cross. Check us out. We're on the web. Holy Cross College. You get to the top, get hooked in, and then you look over the edge. I was like, no way am I jumping off this tower. I'm staying right here. I'm like, am I ever going to be good enough to be a Marine? When it was all said and done, watching the car guard raise the American flag, I thought, I am a United States Marine. PFC Keith Parker knows you don't join the Marines, you become one. Visit marines.com or call 1-800-MARINES. There's always a moment of truth where it's either put up or shut up. We were yelling our hearts out. Even in our weakness, even in our pain, we continued to push. I don't know where the pain went to, but all I know is that I had what it took. 
I am a United States Marine. PFC Darrell Willis serves his country as a Marine. Will you? Visit Marines.com or call 1-800-MARINES. Welcome back here to the Regional Radio Sports Network. We're broadcasting live from the File Center here in South Bend, Indiana. Adam Demery alongside me. Matt Copsey here, 47-18 your score on the women's side here of this men's and women's doubleheader action. The Lady Saints have led the entire way so far as they head into the second half here. Matt, real quick, want to step away from the women's side and talk about our second game here tonight on the men's side of things. A much more evenly matched game that we should see here in the nightcap, if you will, of this men's and women's doubleheader. Just had a chance to sit down with Mike McBride, the head coach of the Saints, and it was kind of just a, a tale of two halves for Holy Cross when you take a look at Saturday's game against Robert Morris. 53-50 to at halftime. Holy Cross was in the game. Some cold shooting for the second half really kind of plagued the Saints. Well, and I think the depth of uh, Robert Morris showed in the second half, as we mentioned, you know, Holy Cross was playing nine players, and Robert Morris had 14 players. And, you know, every two, three minutes, you'd see Robert Morris bring three players over here, and maybe Holy Cross would bring one. So just I think the, the, enth- the endurance just kind of wore out, and you knew that Robert Morris wanted to play at that high, you know, at that uh, high tempo pace, and Holy Cross was able to do it early on. Unfortunately, they they just kind of uh, ran out of gas in the second half, and uh, to Robert Morris's credit, they were able to hit some shots and then were able to uh, use their defense to create more opportunities. I want to remind our listeners that game will be immediately following the women's game here. Got 20 minutes left here on the women's side as we have some audio issues trying to be fixed behind us. Uh, that's the noise that you're hearing in the background. Holy Cross to our left in their home white uniforms. Saints written in silver, trimmed in maroon in the front. Maroon numbers in the front and back, trimmed in silver. They'll move from right to left on your computer screen or electronic device. The Crimson Wave, the visitors out of Calumet College of St. Joseph will be moving from left to right. They're in their road maroon uniforms with the maroon numbers in the front and back, trimmed in white. Crimson Wave written in maroon, trimmed in white as well. The starters for Holy Cross, taking Schulteis, Carmen Lowe, Shelby Nelson, Aaron Leak, and Shana Anderson, the Crimson Wave will counter with their starters tonight that started the game. It was Jaleesa Saez, Dolores Moore, Tierra Sanders, Brittany Kissel, and Jenna Locicera, who has the basketball now over here on the near side, guarded by Shelby Nelson. Adam Demery alongside me, Matt Copsey. Zach Ricos upstairs bringing you the picture here as we have a near turnover. Shayna Anderson tapped that one out of bounds for the Saints here. With 12 seconds left in the shot clock, Crimson Wave will inbound it underneath their own basket here to the near side. Adam, one of the things Pat and I talked about at halftime was is what does Coach Nespajani do in a situation like this where the game seemingly is in hand? I said that it's a situation. There's a block shot by uh, Shane Anderson, the rebound over to Carmen Lowe. Up ahead for Leak, up now for Shane Anderson in transition. Layup up, no good. She gets her own rebound, shot up, and is blocked, but they're going to call a foul on the Crimson Wave, and they're going to get Los Cicero with the foul for the visitors. So Shana Anderson will head to the charity stripe, and this will be her first trip to the free throw line for the season. Shana Anderson, a 50% free throw shooter, and the first one is up and in. But to, to continue what I was saying, Adam, is that th- this allows her the opportunity to use some different combinations that she might not get an opportunity to do during the season and just to give some other players an opportunity to get some valuable experience in situations they might have to come into later on as the season goes along. Shane Anderson goes two for two from the charity stripe. A 31-point advantage for the Saints as Aaron Leak playing the passing lanes on the far side will knock that one out of bounds. 9-18 to play here in quarter number three. A little bit of noise starting to be made from the set fans across the way for Holy Cross. Taking Schulteis with a nice steal off the inbounds, and she gets the lamp to go on the other side. The on-ball pressure for Holy Cross has been top-notch here tonight, and the Crimson Wave have folded under it here so far. Well, and that's what Holy Cross is. They're, they've used defense to create the opportunities offensively. That's why the shooting percentage went up in the second quarter. They were 11 of 18. Here's Kissel on the pass and the layup on the near side. We'll get it up and in. 51 to 20. Lead cut back down to 31. 8.47 Kissel. to play here in the third quarter. And Kissel's counted that's going to be a jump ball and the ball's going to stay with Holy Cross. The shot clock will remain at 23, but uh, Kissel scored six of the, has scored six of uh, Calumet College's last eight points going back to the uh, first half. Nice pass from Lincoln for Nelson. That shot won't go, and the rebound will come out for Lo Cicero. 
Up ahead in transitional, stolen right back though by Shelby Nelson. As it's been a little bit of a tennis match at times, looking to our left and then immediately to our right, and there's a travel for Carmen Lowe, the ball right back to the Crimson Wave. Yeah, yeah. Seven turnovers now for Holy Cross. It's 18 for Calumet St. Joe. You know, Matt, when you take a look at this type of game, and we talked about it at the pregame show coming in, you, you look at these two teams on a, on a turnover average scale as Crimson Wave uh, from Calumet St. Joe averaging 28 a game, Holy Cross averaging 20. This is a type of matchup, especially when you're up by 31 on Holy Cross's side of things. You can really work on some things offensively and try and limit some of those turnovers, which is something they haven't really been able to do there as Carmen Lowe's fouled off the rebound. And, and that's and that's a, a perfect uh, observation, Adam, is that because this team needs to work on ball handling, and I think it's an opportunity for them to do that. So off the rebound and the foul from the Crimson Wave. That's their second here in the third quarter. Eight minutes to play in quarter number three. Back come the Saints. It'll be Leak up top to Schulteis. Left wing, three-pointer up off the mark, but Nelson there to grab the rebound. She quickly gets it out for Leak on the right elbow. Fresh shot clock for the Saints. And that was a situation where Nelson just took the ball away from it as Schulteis knocks down a three after missing one. It's almost as if the first three-pointer from Schultz Ice was a little bit too close for her. She took a couple steps back on the right side and gets it to go. Here's a steal there. Stepped on the line. Yeah, that's a tough one there as Schultz Ice had another easy layup. She went down and finished the, the shot anyway. Probably the officials didn't appreciate that, but Schultz Ice well, has been in the plat passing lane all night long. Well, and the momentum was carrying her toward the basket, and it, the thing is is that, you know, you, an abrupt stop might cause a turn, and there's another turnover. Leak off the steal, off the deflection from Carmen Lowe. Back to Schulteis, back for Leak. Now for Anderson in the wing, the three-point jumper won't go. Nelson with the offensive rebound initially, but she lost it, and it came into the hands of Sanders. Up ahead come the Crimson Wave. And throwing it away over that far side will be Dolores Moore. Back come the Saints the other way. Now for Anderson from Leak across the timeline. Back for Leak. Swings it to the right. Schulteis in between the circles. Back to the left side. Left free throw line extended for Aaron Leak. Now to Schulteis. Another long three. Up, in and out, no good. And the rebound comes out for Kissel. Let's go, let's go. Brittany Kissel now will walk it up for the Crimson Wave. She gets back into a jog now on the far side. Works to her right. Backs things out. And she comes out for Dolores Moore here to the near wing. Moore now off the screen from the right elbow. 15-footer on the way. Partially blocked, it looked like, from Leak. It'll be in and out no good and off of the Saints. The Crimson Wave will keep possession as Keisha Streeter comes into the game and Raven Delph as well. Carmen Lowe and Shelby Nelson will take a seat. And, and, and what I've already noticed from, a, from an observation point is that Calumet St. Joe is much better in the half court. They're not a, at this point in, in their program, they're not a transition team. I think they need to concentrate on doing stuff in the half court is that's going to be another turnover. That's number five here in the quarter for the uh, Crimson Wave. It just seems that they're not at the point yet where they can get the transition game going like Holy Cross can and try to speed things up. They need to be into a set where they're able to get good looks at the basket, not forcing up shots. Shana Anderson is fouled along the baseline on the far side. And that'll be the third team foul against the Crimson Wave. They're going to get the foul on Stephanie Daniels. And that's Daniels' second foul. Third here the, as their streeter for a yeah, layup. Yeah, that's a great pass from Aaron Leak. A great inbounds play run by the Saints there as Streeter found an opening right down the middle of the lane and took advantage of it. Here's a near save by Saez. She tries to get it inside. The ball is swung around out to Moore on the left wing. Now three-pointers and air ball. And that will be out of bounds. Possession will go to the Saints. Norris and Barnes will come into the game. Taking Schulteis and Aaron Leak will take a seat. And the Crimson Wave will show a little bit of a full court press. Once again, different combinations being used by Coach Nespajani. It has that luxury. 56 to 20, a 36 point advantage for the Saints, their largest of the night, with 5.43 to play here in the third quarter. Saints just working around the perimeter. Here's Anderson along the baseline. That's another block for Sanders. That's block number five on the night. She had four in the first half, her first one here in the third quarter. 
Comes with 5.31 to play, and the Crimson Wave will get the possession off the jump ball. So they'll have the length of the court to go as they got a couple of substitutions. McKenzie Sullivan into the game for the visitors. Kissel will set the screen. Norris wasn't ready for it. Sias comes away with it. Back to Kissel up top. Now down low. Out for Sullivan. Left wing. Three-pointer on the way. No good. And the rebound's bounced out in the corner where Kerry Barnes will track it down for the Saints. Barnes across the timeline. Quickly up ahead for Morris here. For Norris, excuse me, in the corner. Handing it off for Streeter. Closing in on five minutes to play here in the third quarter. Norris to Barnes here in the left wing. Now to Delph. From the free throw line, 15-footer on the way, off the mark, and the rebound comes out for Tierra Sanders. Sanders, four points, seven rebounds, five blocks. Norris got a deflection there as Kissel will come away with it for the Crimson Wave. A lot of active hands tonight for the Saints defensively. That's been a big reason why they're up 36. With 10 seconds on the shot clock, here's a throw up by Daniels. And it'll be... Grabbed by Sanders off the rebound, off the miss, and back out for Saez. Up near midcourt, as Saez will work to her right. Gets the screen, works it around. Now gets it inside. That time is going to be Daniels, and Stephanie Daniels will get the shot to go and the foul. Carrie Barnes charged with the foul for the Saints, and Daniels will head to the line for an and one opportunity. And that'll be immediate timeout, which means we'll take a timeout ourselves. 4.16 to play here in the third quarter. The Saints with the lead over the Crimson Wave, 56-22. to Back after this in the Regional Radio Sports Network. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775... We have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. Welcome back here to the Regional Radio Sports Network. Adam Demery alongside me, Matt Copsey here at the File Center. Zach Rico's upstairs bringing you the camera. Stephanie Daniels at the free throw line for an and one opportunity. First free throw of the night for the Crimson Wave. That goes way off the mark, doesn't hit rim. Lane violation. They, yeah. So they'll, the free throw will, as if it did not take place, there'll be a turnover instead. Stephanie Daniels, a 28% free throw shooter coming into tonight's contest. As Kerry Barnes gets it across the timeline for the Saints, back comes Holy Cross with a 34-point advantage. Norris here to the near wing, up top for Barnes. 18 seconds on the shot clock. She works to her right, gets inside the lane, shot up, no good. Delft got a hand on it, went out of bounds. They're going to say it went off for Raven Delft. So it'll be... Crimson Wave basketball. Early shooting numbers here in the third quarter. Calumet, St. Joe, 2 of 8. Holy Cross, 3 of 10. Inside of four minutes to play, and we're going to get a foul on the offense for the Crimson Wave. That one's going to go against Brittany Kissel, and that will be the first team, or excuse me, the fourth team foul against the Crimson Wave here in the third quarter. Yeah, they only had three fouls whistled. They only had two fouls whistled on them in the entire first half, and now they've got four here in the second half. Next one will put the Saints in the double bonus. Streeter from the left elbow. Anderson in the corner with the three. That's going to be short. Delft tracks down the basketball. Back for Norris with another three. That's off the mark, and the rebound tapped around, and Kissel comes away with it. A lot of contact inside the lane there. No call. And the Crimson Way will come away with the basketball. It'll be Saez up top for Kissel. Angling to her left, and that comes to her right around a screen that time set by Sanders. She'll get the layup to go on the near side. Great move to the basket that time from Brittany Kissel. And you're starting to see uh, Calumet St. Joe get a little bit more confidence in taking the ball to the basket. 
Barnes is up top. She sets it down for Delft. Gets around her man and Sanders and gets the layup to go. Steve Helm wanted a three seconds call. Didn't get it. It'll be a 34 point advantage once again for the Saints. 58-24. 2.43 to play in the quarter. Here's Kissel in the corner and Anderson with a block for Holy Cross. Shane Anderson with that's her second block of the yeah, quarter. Yeah, she's averaging about one block per contest. Great job defensively. That's one thing I've noticed here tonight so far, Matt, is the rotation for Holy Cross has been one of the better ones we've seen all year long. Well, and they're, and they're being able to move a little bit defensively where they're able to get in position as there's a shot by Kissel up and no good, and the rebound's going to come off to uh, Kerry Barnes. That's going to be Barnes' sixth rebound of the evening. Barnes will track it up court. She gets it across the timeline. Now over for Norris. Stops after a couple dribbles. Gets it for Alicia McIntosh who just checked in. And McIntosh throws it away. Stephanie Daniels off the steal. In transition. Spins around Norris. Still trying to handle the basketball. Here's a cross court pass for Kissel. Thought about the long two as her foot was on the line. Now gets it back from Sias. Drives the baseline. Layup up and in. Brittany Kissel has continued to attack the basket all night long here for the Crimson Wave. Yeah, she, it pays off there. She's got 10 points now. First player in double figures for the Crimson Wave. Averages 10 points per contest. Right at her average there. 150 to play in the third quarter. Nelson's pass deflected up into the air and stolen away that time by Mackenzie Sullivan. Sullivan now stops on the left wing. Down low looking for Daniels and a kick call against Shelby Nelson. And Adam, the last couple possessions from Holy Cross we're starting to see a little bit of... Uh, some of the things that have plagued them in the past, you know, not the crisp passes. They're trying to force the ball inside. You've had back-to-back turnovers, the result. 23 seconds on the shot clock. Size with a long lob pass deflected around, and Carrie Barnes comes away with it like a free safety on interception there. She takes it coast to coast, gets the layup to go on the near side. The Saints can do no wrong here tonight, especially on the defensive end as Saez tries to dribble into traffic. Loses on the line. Yeah. Oh, they're, oh, gonna, they're gonna, gonna block. I think that's gonna go on Kerry Barnes. She dribbled nope. right into traffic. No, Alicia McIntosh is gonna pick up her third foul. Team second. At the 118 mark of the third quarter. Kissel will inbound for the Crimson Wave. Looking, looking, now comes out. Looking that time for Los Cicero. Instead, somehow gets it out for Saez. Back for Kissel along the baseline. She's double teamed back up top for Sullivan, and that pass is thrown away. Miscommunication between Sullivan and Daniels as Daniels came away for the screen, and Sullivan was looking for the wraparound pass. Here's Barnes the other way in the corner for three. She knocks it down. 63-26, 54 seconds left in the third as Holy Cross is well on its way on its eighth victory of the season. 14 now for Barnes. Jump ball, I think. And I don't know how you call a jump ball when it's two teammates grabbing for the well, basketball at the same time. That's a travel, in, in my opinion, but instead, the, the end result's Holy, it's going to be a turnover. That's now 26 turnovers for Calumet St. Joe. McIntosh across half court, wraparound pass for Lowe. Wraps it back up top for Barnes for another three-point look. This one's off the mark. The rebound's tapped around and lands in the hands of Julissa Saez. 25 seconds left here in the third quarter. One second differential between shot clock and game clock. That doesn't matter now as Kerry Barnes gets the steal. Shot clock is off. And Barnes stepped out of bounds. Great job on the recovery defensively by Stephanie Daniels. She poked it free just long enough for Kerry Barnes to step out of bounds. Got a little bit too ahead of herself. The uh, Crimson Wave can play for the final shot of the quarter if they desire. Sias calls out Orange for Crimson Wave to run the offensive set. And McIntosh gets the ball stripped away, and she'll lob it out for Nelson at the buzzer. That will not count. It's off the mark anyway. Three quarters are in the books, 30 minutes into it. The Saints lead 63-26. We're going to take a quick break. You're listening and watching Holy Cross Basketball right here on the Regional Radio Sports Network. More students than ever are considering Holy Cross College for their future. Have you started to think about yours? Holy Cross College is a Catholic, co-ed, four-year institution of higher learning, offering a great curriculum with 11 NAIA varsity sports. Holy Cross offers 21 majors and minors, so you can excel in the subjects you love. 
Holy Cross also has the lowest tuition rate of all the private colleges in Michiana. 90% of students receive financial aid with an average award of over $24,000. Holy Cross College students have resources such as peer tutoring, writing, and math centers to ensure your academic success. Most importantly, professors know who you are and your strengths and weaknesses. Together, building your future. Be part of the 524 students that enjoy a lively on-campus experience, offering a vibrant social life with countless clubs and intramural activities that enhance your college experience. Visit Holy Cross College now. The experience matters. hcc-nd.edu. Back live here on the Regional Radio Sports Network. Adam Demery alongside me, Matt Copsey. Thanks for joining us here on www.rrsn.com, your home for all Holy Cross men's and women's basketball. A men's and women's twin bowl here against Calumet College of St. Joseph has the women's side of things. Looking pretty good for Holy Cross. Three quarters in the books. They lead 63-26 to with 10 minutes to play here in South Bend, Indiana, as this is a Chicagoland Collegiate Athletic Conference South Division matchup. And Aaron Leak off the inbounds with the deflection. Up ahead for Schulteis, and the Saints will start it off with an and one opportunity for Tegan Schulteis as she's fouled on the layup. 16 points now for Schulteis. Turnover, that was turnover number 29 for the Crimson Wave, who were 4 of 12 from the field in the third quarter for 33% compared to 6 of 17 for Holy Cross. A couple of substitutions for the Crimson Wave. It will be Andrea Zamora back into the game. Also, Tierra Sanders back on the floor for the Crimson Wave as Schulteis knocks in the free throw. She completes the end one opportunity, a 68% free throw shooter for Schulteis. And we mentioned this on Saturday, Matt. That's down a significant number than what she was last yeah, year at 85%. Was, I was going to say she was around 80, 85% last year, and it's a mental thing. It's, uh, I think she's starting to get her confidence level back up. There's uh, the... Uh, on Saturday in the game, uh, she hit uh, 8 of 11, so she's starting to get up there. There's another kick. Crimson Wave will keep possession. They'll inbound underneath their own basket here to the near side. want to remind our listeners once again, it's a doubleheader action here tonight at the Final Center. The men's side of things will continue right after the conclusion of this quarter as it's deflected out of bounds. It was a block from Nelson. And McIntosh tried to strip it away from Sanders, and she stepped out of bounds while doing so. So the Crimson Wave still with possession. 17 seconds on the shot clock. Kissel will inbound. She throws it up ahead for Saez. That was the fifth block of the night for Shelby Nelson. Alicia McIntosh, Aaron Lee. Car- second block, I'm sorry. Aaron Lee, Carmen Lowe, and Shelby Nelson and Tegan Schulteis will start the fourth quarter for Holy Cross. It'll be Brittany Kissel along with Andrea Samora. Julissa Saez will get a shot clock violation trying to get them or his, his team to recognize that was Steve Helm, the head coach for the Crimson Wave here in his first season. It's another turnover for the Crimson Wave as back come the Saints the other way. Schulteis here to the near side, out for McIntosh. That's a long two-point jump shot. That's short, and Kissel will come away with the rebound. It's deflected off the hands of Carmen Lowe. Saez trying to get around half court. Right behind her is Tegan Schulteis trying to get some fear put in the young point guard. That three from Kissel won't go, and the rebound comes out for Alicia McIntosh. McIntosh down low looking for Nelson. Nelson somehow grabs it out of the hands of Brittany Kissel and turns around to get the layup on the far side. Quiet night for Shelby Nelson. That's only her sixth point. They haven't really needed her a whole lot. No. She's come up big, though, I tell you what, in the Thursday and Saturday game. Well, and that's, uh, it, tonight's a night where the, she can uh, do all the other things. If that's a forced pass inside, it's going to be another turnover. Partially blocked by Aaron Lee. Great job defensively there. Schulteis with a nice pass to low on the near side for the layup. Holy Cross's transition offense has been spectacular here tonight at home. 70-26 to 26 as a result. The lead for Holy Cross with eight minutes to play. Here in regulation. 12-0 run for Holy Cross right now. As that's an air ball from Saez, and the rebound comes out for Aaron Leak. Leak up ahead now for Holy Cross, trying to get some numbers. Stops, comes back for Nelson. Near side, draws the foul. He'll, she'll head to the line for two. They get the foul that time on Dolores Mil- Moore. Excuse me. Moore, a 5'6 junior out of Gary, Indiana. Three white jerseys coming in at the next dead ball. Stephanie Daniels will come in for the Crimson Wave as well. 
as Nelson's first free throw is up and in. Delph will come in for Nelson. Streeter and Anderson will replace Carmen Lowe and Alicia McIntosh. Seven points now for Nelson. Nelson's second free throw is up and good. So she goes two for two. She'll be replaced by Raven Delph. One of the things you take a look at the roster map for Holy Cross is, you know, clearly they're up almost, they're up 36 right now as it stands with 7.50 to play 46 here. 46, actually. 46, excuse me, with... Uh, with regulation upcoming here, and we got a foul on Moore. That was an offensive foul. Holy Cross, you would think, would put the players that don't get a lot of playing time on the floor just to not risk injury for key players and all that. The problem with uh, Amy Nesmajani, I guess this isn't really a problem, but shows the depth. All these players on this roster play significant minutes for Amy Nesmajani. They do, and, and as I mentioned, is there's a... A shot up by Streeter, no good, but Delp with the rebound, and she's going to go to the free throw line. This allows her the opportunity to use different combinations out here and to see what would work. So Delph will head to the line for two. Raven Delp already with four points. She's going to go to the free throw line, hit the first free throw. Holy Crush is Holy Cross now seven out of eight from the line. Make it eight and nine. Saints have led the entire night here. They lead by 48. It's their largest of the night with 7.23 to play. Kissel, kind of with a little bit of a walk, gets it out for Moore on the left side. Gets a screen, Moore works to her right, stops for Daniels. Cross-court pass for Kissel in the corner. She's got to throw it back up top for Moore. Daniels now from the right elbow, dumps it for Kissel with eight seconds on the shot clock. Brittany Kissel stops, comes back up top. Saez gets around Schulteis. Three seconds left, and Schulteis gets the block for the Saints. Back come, comes Holy Cross the other way. Long pass for Anderson in transition, and Shayna Anderson finishes it on the other side. 76-26, to 26, lead up to 50 now with 6.45 to play. And right now it's an 18-0 run for Holy Cross. Saez now from up top. Long three-pointer there, won't go, and the rebound... Is still loose. Daniels comes away with it. We got a jump ball, and it will favor the Saints. Four team fouls against the Crimson Wave with six and a half to play here. The next foul will put the Saints in the double bonus. As the possession arrow favors Holy Cross, that's another turnover for the Crimson Wave. Yeah, that is now... That's now 33 turnovers. Leak off the pass to Delph off the backdoor screen. Raven Delph couldn't convert on the near side layup, and the rebound comes out for Stephanie Daniels, a 5'7 junior who wrestled that one away from Raven Delph at 6'2. And uh, amongst the trees, the little one comes up with the basketball. Saez stops in the left short corner, crosses it over for Kissel here to the near side. Back for Saez on the left side of the free, of the three-point line. Here's a long three-pointer that time for Zamora. That is her third three-pointer of the season. She's now 0 for 3. 5.46 to play in regulation. Back come the Saints the other way with a 50-point advantage. We're going to see Masson Tomlin into the game as well for the Saints. Back in to the game. She played a little bit in the first half as Aaron Leak got a nice move to the basket. A wide open layup. Couldn't convert. Tomlin with the offensive rebound. Delph with the spin move. Gets the layup to go. Raven Delph played really well here tonight. Yeah, eight points now for Delph to go with two rebounds. So Kissel up top. Down low now for Daniels around Tomlin. Shot up no good. Mass and Tomlin had the rebound but lost control of it. The ball goes out of bounds. It will be Crimson Wave basketball. 5.09 remaining. Ocicero here to the near side. Block up top for Saez. Up top's Kissel with a long three. That one will be off the mark as Anderson wraps it around and wrestles it away from Ocicero for the Crimson Wave. Anderson up ahead for Tomlin along the baseline. Spins back up top. Looking for Carrie Barnes. Finds her. Barnes on the right wing. 
Stops, thinks about it, goes to Delph and a miscommunication between Barnes and Delph there is going to cost a turnover. As Daniels comes the other way, her shot is blocked by Aaron Lee. Media timeout, 4.38 to play here in the fourth quarter. 78-26 your score. Holy Cross getting it done defensively as they're well on their way to their eighth victory here on the 2015-2016 campaign. Back after this on the Regional Radio Sports Network. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. Back live here in the Regional Radio Sports Network. Adam Demery alongside me, Matt Copsey. 4.38 to play here in regulation. 78-26 your score. Holy Cross with the lead over the Crimson Wave as this one's over the backboard off the shot that time from Stephanie Daniels. 4.35 left in regulation. Back come the Holy Cross Saints. Four of 23 in the second half for Calumet St. Joe from the field. Here's Barnes in the near wing with a three-point jump shot. That's off the mark. Daniels gets another rebound for the Crimson Wave. Baseball pass down the court for Kissel. We'll get the layup for the Crimson Wave on the near side just over the hands that time of Shana Anderson as Kissel got behind the defense of Holy Cross. 78-28 your score, 405. It's a play here in regulation. 12 points now for Kissel. That stopped a 20 nothing run for Holy Cross. It's a 2-3 zone look for the Crimson Wave. McIntosh out for Anderson. That shot is partially blocked, and the rebound comes out for the visitors. Brittany Kissel comes away with the basketball. Now up ahead for Saez. Saez up top. Gets around the defense. She's got a quick step. I tell you what, she gets back inside the lane. The shot is up and in for Daniels. She'll get the foul, but a great move by Jalissa Saez, Matt, is... We saw her just dribble her way around yeah. the defense and gets, in, gets inside the lane for a nice, easy pass. Foul's going to go on Carrie Barnes. That'll be her second. First team foul of the fourth quarter here is Daniels. Another lane violation. Now we're going to get that one on Jenna LoCicero. Frustrated visitors in maroon jerseys right now. Crimson Wave. Have had a tough season, 1-17, 0-8 in conference play. This will be their sixth straight loss on the season. As that pass is deflected around, Delph comes away with it. Barnes over here to the near side, wide open layup. She gets it up and in. 80-30 your score. Lead's been as big as 52 for the Saints who have led the entire night as that's another turnover. Unable to handle the pass on the far side is Dolores Moore. 35 turnovers now for the Crimson Wave. This game was tied 2-2 and 4-4 and then a three-pointer by Jessica Norris back in the first quarter and the Saints have led since. Here's McIntosh working on her post game. Comes up top for Delph. Now Barnes on the drive. Drives the lane. Gets it out for McIntosh. Long three. In and out. No good. And the rebound will come out for Moore. Dolores Moore up ahead. Quickly for Brittany Kissel. Kissel on the near wing. Looking down low for Daniels. Ball deflected around. Daniels tracks it down. Up top for Moore. Thought about the three. She works to her right. Stops. Comes down. It's deflected around. And it's kicked away by the Saints. So it will still be Crimson Wave basketball. 16 on the shot clock. 232 left in regulation. Possession arrow favors the visitors in the Crimson Wave as Saez gets the ball out in the far corner. Up top for Kissel now. Daniels inside the free throw line. Shot is up and it's off the mark and there's another foul against Holy Cross. 
I think, I think that one's going to go on. Uh, I think I think that one's going to go on Madison Tomblin. Second team foul against the Saints here in the fourth quarter. The next foul against the Crimson Wave will put Holy Cross. In the double bonus is that shots an air ball from Kissel. Partially blocked it looked like from the Saints. McIntosh in transition. Up ahead for Barnes. Along the baseline. Layup up. Can't get it to go initially. She gets her own offensive rebound. Her second shot is partially blocked by Kissel. And the ball's deflected out for Saez. And then McIntosh is going to be charged with the foul. 2-0-3 left in regulation. As Jessica Norris comes into the game to replace Alicia McIntosh. McIntosh goes out with her fourth foul. The Crimson Wave had had fourth, their fourth team foul called against them at the six and a half mark as that shot's off the mark for Locisera. They have gone over, over four minutes without committing a foul and just as I say that, Jessica Norris is fouled on the other That's end but good discipline for the most part defensively. Locisera well, picks up her second foul. So the Saints in the double bonus will be two free throws the rest of the way as Norris knocks in the first of two attempts. And for Jessica Norris, these are her first free throws of her career here at Holy Cross. Well, she's one of one. She's now got eight points on the night. Second free throw is going to be short. And it'll cut her free throw percentage in half. One out of two on the night. Here's more on the drive. Norris gets her hand on it and strips and steals it away. Up ahead for the Saints, looking for Anderson. Kissel right there in the passing lane. She causes a jump ball, and that'll be a turnover as the possession arrow favors the Crimson Wave. 81-30, Holy Cross. 134 remaining. Well, Adam, I think it's safe to say that Holy Cross is going to improve to 8-13, and, and more importantly, 5-5 five and five in conference play. They'll be back to the 500 mark. And speaking with Amy Nespajani before the game, looking at her schedule, she was... Looking at the rest of the way, thought there were a number of opportunities for this team to not only grow and get better, as that's another turnover and a travel against the Crimson Wave, but to keep improving her team's chances of making the postseason tournament in, in the Chicagoland Collegiate Athletic Conference. And I mean, Matt, you know this as well as anybody. Once you make that tournament, anything can happen. Yes, very much so. Next two games will be on the road. They'll be at Roosevelt and at Olivet Nazarene. We'll have a chance to, to talk with Amy after the game here in this next. 60 seconds or so as that shot's off the mark for Holy Cross. 81-53, still your score. That's another turnover for the Crimson Wave with 52 seconds left in regulation. 38, I have. Saints can take this down to about the 22-second mark here. We'll see if they slow things down. Tomlin gets a screen from Carmen Lowe, hands it off. For Anderson, Anderson on the drive, stripped away, comes back up for Norris. Three-point jump shot is off the mark, and Daniels will get the rebound, and then she is fouled on the play. They're going to get Carmen Lowe on the foul. And that's only the team's fourth per, fourth foul. I don't know where the... That's only That's 14. only four. This should not be free throws. So it'll be out of bounds. Thirty-three seconds left. There's a three-second differential between shot clock and game clock. Saez will walk it up for the Crimson Wave as she's done all night long. Her and Kissel have played the most minutes for the visitors. Kissel now with the basketball up top for Saez. Back for Kissel in the near wing. Fifteen seconds on the shot clock as Kissel tries to drive towards the lane, denied by Anderson. Los Cicero spins around, shot over Raven Delph. She'll get it to fall. Ten seconds left in the game, and the Saints will just hold it off. Tomlin to Norris, and that will do it. The Saints pick up their eighth victory of the season. They defeat the Crimson Wave 81-32. And a big victory for Holy Cross, their second in a row as they head on the road for the next couple of games. As Matt mentioned, against Roosevelt will be their next game, and then Olivet Nazarene on the road as well. As we're going to be joined here by Amy Nespajani, head coach, of the Saints. Another big victory for Holy Cross, their second in a row. Congratulations, Coach. It was a, a game that you once again led wire to wire. You get the victory here. It was uh, a little bit on the easier side from a scoring standpoint, but your girl's still having to get better and better as time went on. 
Yeah, uh, you know, these, these games are sometimes tough because, uh, you know, the, that team is very, they can be very dangerous. They take a lot of shots, and, you know, if they start hitting some of those shots, we could be we could have been in trouble. They, they rebounded really well on the offensive end, which was our focus coming out that second half because we didn't rebound well the first half. I thought bench played well. The whole team played well as a result, and you got a chance to see some different combinations out there on the floor. That was the goal of the second uh, half because, you know, some of our posts are used to playing with a certain post. Some of our guards are playing with certain guards. So we tried to mix it up a little bit, coming out with different, different five-star of the half so we could play with our rotation a little bit um, just to get people some, you know, some time with other people. Uh, but, you know, overall I think everybody contributed one way or another, whether it was getting a rebound here or assist there or steal here. Um, so it was a good team win. Defensively, you guys were all over the passing lanes. Tegan Schulteis continued to get steal after steal, it seemed like. Uh, Jessica Norris played some good on-ball pressure. Alicia McIntosh off the bench as well. Kind of talk a little bit about your defense here. You know, we uh, it, there we have a couple different types of defenses, and when uh, we can shoot those passing lanes, we can get a couple of good steals. So, you know, that was our focus today, really, you know, really be active in the passing lanes. And, you know, the guard stepped up to the challenge and, you know, forced, uh, forced a lot of turnovers, so that was good. You forced 36 turnovers here tonight, Coach. Uh, real quick, looking ahead now, you're going to be on the road the next couple of games. Roosevelt's up first. What can you tell us about Roosevelt? They're tough. They're very tough. You know, they came out, they uh, beat Robert Morris by 11. They're, they're a very dangerous team. You know, I would, I would actually compare them a lot to us because they play with really, really good teams. Sometimes they just fall a little bit short, so... Uh, it's going to be a great matchup for us. I think the girls will be ready. They'll be, you know, they'll be up to get number three in a row. Coach, enjoy this one. Uh, congratulations on the victory, and uh, get your girls ready for Roosevelt. Thank you very much. Once again, Amy Nespajani, head coach of the Saints, join us here in the post game show. Her team victorious here tonight by a final score of 81 to 32. We're going to quickly throw it over to Matt Copsey for our final game stats before we get you ready for the men's side of things, Matt. Okay, for uh, Calumet St. Joe, uh, Brittany, K Brittany Kissel, 4 of 17 from the field for 12 points. Uh, 6 of 17 from the field, excuse me, for 12 points. She also had 8 rebounds. Jenna LaCicero, 3 of 9 from the field for 6 points. Ju Juliessa, uh, Juliessa Saez, 1 of 11 from the field for, for 2 points. Dolores Moore, 0 of 5 from the field, no points. Uh, Tiara Sanders, 2 of 4 from the field for 4 points. Stephanie Daniels, 4 of 11 from the field for 8 points. Mackenzie Sullivan, 0 of 2 from the field. And Andrea Zamora played but did not score. 16 out of 60 from the field, 27%. 0 out of 14 from 3-point range. And 0 of 1 from the free throw line. 45 total rebounds for Calumet. 8 to lead the way for Sanders and Kissel. They had only three assists in the ball game, all for Saez. 34, 36 turnovers, four block shots, three for Sanders, one for Daniels, and only they had only five, seven steals. Kissel had four. For Holy Cross, Keisha Streeter, four of six from the field, one of two from the free throw line, 9.7 rebounds. Shelby Nelson, three of seven from the field, two of two from the free throw line, 8.6 rebounds. Kerry Barnes, seven of 15 from the field, for 16 points. Jessica Norris, 3 of 6 from the field, 1 of 2 from the free throw line, 8 points. Taken Schulteis, 7 of 13 from the field, 1 of 1 from the free throw line, 17 points. Aaron Leak, 1 of 4 from the field for 2 points. Alicia McIntosh missed, missed uh, all her uh, uh, field goals, 0 of 3. Madison Tomlin, 0 of 1 from the field. Shane Anderson, 3 of 10 from the field, 2 of 2 from the free throw line, 9 points. Raven Delp, 3 of 5 from the field, 2 of 2 from the free throw line, 8 points. And Carmen Lowe, 2 of 3 from the field for 4 points. Holy Cross was 33 out of 75 from the field for 44%. 6 out of 25 from 3-point range for 24%. 9 out of 11 from the free throw line for 82%. 42 rebounds for Holy Cross, as we mentioned, 7 for Streeter. They had 18 assists in the game, 6 for Aaron Leak to lead the way, 16, 14 turnovers, they had six block shots, one for Nelson, two each for Anderson and Leak, and one for Schulteis. 19 steals, five for taking Schulteis to lead the way. That all adds up to an 81-32 victory for the Saints. They improved to 8-13 overall, 5-5 five five in conference play for the Crimson Wave out of Calumet College of St. Joseph. Steve Helm in his first season, his team drops to 1-18, 0-9 
in conference play. We're going to quickly power down, and then we'll come back on the men's side of things. A, a very compelling matchup in the Crossroads Collegiate Athletic Conference here tonight on the men's side as well. As you're watching and listening to a men's and women's doubleheader right here on the Regional Radio Sports Network. <laughs> 